This video has been sponsored by NVIDIA Studio and PC Specialist. Link in the description. Whoa! 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 Hey guys, it's me, Finzler. And boy, do I have quite the treat for you. <laughs> Wait, am I on a screen right now? Yes, yes, he is on the screen right now. Because today we're gonna learn about the 3D screen effect. Enjoy. A huge thank you to PC Specialist and NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this five part editing series. Stick around to the end because I'm gonna be sharing some exciting information about their offers for you guys. So stick, stick around. around. So I made a video not too long ago and I was really happy with this video. This video also had a whole lot of this effect in it. And um, yeah, I'd say I used that a lot. But yeah, I mean, come on, this effect, it's crazy. It's honestly, it's so much easier to watch that than just having this. Yeah. So today I'm gonna show you how to do this effect really easily, both in Premiere and After Effects. I imagine most of you are probably gonna use this effect to show information rather than gaming stuff, but it's definitely one of these effects which you can use on an intro, which is just gonna wow the audience pretty much straight away. Oh man, what do I use as an example of this? What would be some good test footage? Oh, oh look at this conveniently placed product page from PC Specialist of which the link is in the description. So we've got our chosen information that we want to show. This is going to look pretty bland if we leave it just here like this. And you know, you guys probably won't even look at the website. So we could do one of two options. Premiere Pro. Only, it's only game. So when you've got your test footage ready, just drag and drop a pixelated screen overlay on top and then size it up so it covers the screen. Then you've got to change the blend mode to hard light and then set the opacity to about 12%. Nest those two clips together and then add the basic 3D effect. Drag and drop that onto your file and then change the parameters so that it looks something like this. Then when you're happy with that, you create new keyframes, move forward a couple of frames and then change those parameters once again to create new keyframes and then slide them to the end of that clip. Create an adjustment layer and then drag that to the track above your nested sequence. Head over to effects and then find Gaussian blur and then drag that onto the adjustment layer. You probably want to set it to about 50 and then you're going to want to create a mask which is going to act as a vignette on our blur. Invert it and then drag it out so it looks something like an eye shape and then adjust the feather and mask expansion until you're happy with something that's just blurring out the corners. Beautiful. And there you have that. That's a very easy, very serviceable 3D effect. And if you don't have After Effects, then that is the way to do it. However, this is the wish.com version of what we want to do. And you know me, baby, I'm going to give you luxury. I'm going to give you that Bentley Continental of effects, the Mercedes Benz of edits. I'm going to make you glow up from Squidward to Squillian Fancy Sun. What can I say? Just know that for this version of doing it, you're going to need After Effects. Okay, so you've got your thing that you want to make fancy, ready to be fancified. Like before, we're going to slap on that pixelated overlay in Premiere, scale it up so it covers the screen, and then change the blend mode to hard light, and then make it 12% opacity. We're going to highlight and then alt drag to duplicate these layers, and then we're going to highlight those top two, and then replace with an After Effects composition. In After Effects, you're gonna highlight those two clips and then right click and hit pre-compose. Once they're in a pre-comp together, you're gonna hit this little button here, which is gonna make it 3D. To change the variables of this 3D effect, like we did in Premiere, we're gonna to have to go into our pre-comp and open up the transform section. Now I say we have to, but actually we can just use this visual aid here to help us. But ultimately we're gonna to have to open this in order to set the keyframes. So keyframe these variables right here and then go forward a few frames and change the parameters again, which will make new keyframes, and then slide those keyframes we just made to the end of the clip, and well, bam, you got yourself an animation. Generally, my advice with this is to create a small movement rather than a big sweeping, and you know, it depends on the effect, but generally speaking, minute movements tend to look really nice. You hit U on the keyboard, and it will show you all of the keyframes we've just made on the timeline. Highlight those keyframes and then press F9. This is going to create an easy ease effect which just makes those beziers look a little bit nicer and makes the whole animation play a little bit smoother. That's a lot of damage. How about a little more? That's right, we're not done just yet. Right click, go to new and then create camera. Leave the settings as they are and then click OK. 
Open up those camera options and then turn depth of field on. This then makes the aperture and focal distance affect how our scene looks. This all depends on how far away you've got your 3D plane, so you're gonna have to play around with these settings yourself. But judge by eye where the focus is and feel free to keyframe in a focus pull if you wish or keep it as it is. So hop back into Premiere and you can see what we've just made. You can add any effects you want over the top of this. A little bit of camera wiggle, a massive shiny thing, some sparkles, literally, <laughs> literally anything you want. So let's have a look at what we've made today. So I've always had trouble using the dynamic linking feature amidst other things in these softwares. It used to make me kind of dread coming to edit. I remember in my how to edit sound effects video, I really just started to chomp into After Effects for the first time. And while it was pretty cool to use for the first time and see some cool effects, it crashed a lot. And I actually ended up losing a whole third of my project because of a whole system crash. It was honestly quite devastating at the time, which is why today's sponsors mean so much to me. Because in my eyes, it's giving you the best chance that you have to prevent yourself from going through that kind of thing again. It certainly has for me. There are so many features in RTX Studio that help me create videos a whole lot faster. And I haven't even touched on all of them myself. All of these features are included in any NVIDIA Studio certified system. What that means is that NVIDIA have partnered up with system and laptop partners like PC Specialist to allow the release of laptops and desktops that include the all powerful RTX brand within. And thank God it is in, because After Effects and Premiere Pro both use CUDA cores on GeForce GPUs to accelerate multiple effects. You can view said accelerated effects by looking for an icon in the effects panel that looks like this. Get that up, yeah. <laughs> as well as getting you the right GPU, PC Specialist also pick out the right CPU, PSU, memory, and storage options. These systems are made to fit the needs of us creatives from the ground up. The product is then tested by NVIDIA in creative applications and workflows. If it passes NVIDIA's testing, then it is officially an NVIDIA Studio certified product. In my description, you'll find a link to PC Specialist's main page, where you'll be able to create and customize your dream PC with the trusted NVIDIA Studio badge. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. And let me know if you get anything from there. I'm super interested to see what some of you might create. Did I? I kind of like that one. I thought that was good. Yeah well, yeah, well, thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, it was fine. It's next week's video that I'm worried about. Export settings. Well, they, I don't know. I mean, it's a bit different, but yeah, it'll be, I think, I think they'll like it. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. Um, so yeah, join us next week when we learn about export settings, the perfect ones for you. Yeah, you, you know the drill. Get out of here. Get out of here!